or sets in regions in R2. So we just talked about interior and boundary and bounded. By the way, bounded really has nothing to do with boundary points. It's generally computed off two boundary points, but not necessarily. So there are two operators we can use. So the first one is the uh, interior operator. So interior looks like a zero power. I didn't make the notation up, it's just how it is. I think maybe a capital I would be a good, better choice, but S0 is the interior, only the interior uh, points of S. And the other operator is a delta, and it looks very suspiciously like a delta you're about to see, which is partial derivative, and you'll figure out why it's the same symbol in Calc 4. But until you get there, I'll give you a hint, it's Green's theorem, uh, or Stokes' theorem, depending on what dimension you're in, so you can read ahead if you want to. Uh, but this is the uh, other part of S, so this is all the boundary points of S. So this is the boundary operator. Green's theorem or whose theorem? Stokes. Stokes. Boundary. So it's all the boundary points of S. Uh, I don't bother reading ahead. Just wait until you get there in like two months or so. That's what I recommend. You have the book and you have your brain, so you can do whatever you want. But you're probably better off working uh, this quarter for, for our material rather than reading ahead. All right, so all the boundary points of S. So this creates what we call a partition of S. So if we look back, interior versus boundary points, uh, we could analyze this a little more. But basically, if you're an interior point, you're not a boundary point, and vice versa. You can see that right off the definitions. So interior says if there is, and the other one says all contain points not in. So they are, you're either a boundary or an interior. There are no points that are both. So this creates what we call a partition. So I can write S is interior union boundary. So it's just a way to split up all the points of S to be the interior and the boundary. So if I draw a nice little picture, uh, we'll pretend S is circular. So this is S right here, filled in. Equals, so the interior is basically remove the boundary. So still shade in the middle, which might look misleading. Let me switch my interior color. So you still get the entire, oh jeez, the entire interior. So you get the entire interior, and then you union that with the boundary. So it's just a way to partition or split up your space into one type of point versus the other type. And this is useful for finding areas and... Uh, it's useful for a lot of areas. things. Yes and yes. Your writing's getting big again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. That's perfect. So now we'll look at subtraction of sets. Uh, so if we just take any any sets A and B, uh, we are subsets of Rn in general. So you can write A minus B, and in set notation this is uh, any all x in A such that x is not in B. So basically you're taking everything in A and then removing what's in B. And that's what we call 
set subtraction, and you could rewrite it as intersect with the complement is the same as subtraction. And if we keep going with subtraction, I can write, uh, so now we're going to go back to a boundary interior and subtraction. So I could write the interior as S minus the boundary of S, like this. So the interior is all of S, take out the boundary. And I can do the same thing for the boundary is all of S, take out the interior, like that. So you've seen closed intervals before. Anybody want to take a guess at what a closed set would be now that you know about boundaries and interiors? Think about closed intervals versus open intervals. Uh, open set would be going to infinity. A closed set would be... Don't have to go all the way to infinity. You can have an open set between 0 and 1 or a closed set between 0 and 1. So we don't have to think about huge uh, unbounded sets. It just means it includes the perimeter. So it includes, so an open set would not have a boundary or an empty boundary, and a closed set has a boundary. It, it includes the ds points or the delta s points? Basically, yeah. So you're just making a claim on, um, so let's write uh, closed set. So I can make a set closed. This is called the closure. So you use an overbar for the closure. So it's a closure of S, and this is S union. Now I'm going to write a special word that I want to find till Monday. Union all the limit points of S. And I'll define limit points. But it's basically the boundary points and the points close to where the boundary would be, even if they weren't in S. So for example, if you have an open uh, ball, the closure would be everything inside plus add the boundary in. So you're basically adding some extra points that would be on the boundary. That's all the closure is. Um, when closing a set and in the good old days, if you had the open interval 0, 1, the closure would be add in the number 0 and the number 1. You're just basically filling the boundary of the interval. Okay, so 